Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles. This is Sigma, his name's actually a bit of a mouthful, Sigma Lion Get Mogged, we're just going to call him Sigma, uh, of the Senpai Clan, and he's going to be having an extremely rough day in this tier 9 standard battle here on the Steps map. The good news is that he is of course top tier, he's in the Conway, British tier 9 tank destroyer, the good news there is that it does have an extremely good gun. This is the 120mm L1A1, the same gun that the Chieftain was equipped with. The bad news is pretty much everything else about the tank. It's the Centurion hull, which has no more than 76mm of armour anywhere. And the turret's pretty terrible too, but as you can see, that gun is very, very good. Extremely accurate, quick aiming time, and the reload isn't bad either. Yes, that Comet. We may as well address the issue of the Comet that he's sharing this rock with right now. On the one hand, I do feel a certain amount of sympathy for the Comet. The Comet isn't a bad tier 7 medium tank, but it's a tier 7 medium tank with no armour and a pop gun in a tier 9 battle. But what the Comet's chosen to do, instead of actually making himself useful to the team by maybe getting out there and spotting, you see this rock that they're both trying... Yeah, and he's now shooting up Sigma himself. Fortunately, there's no friendly fire in World of Tanks anymore. That's probably why he's doing it. But that rock that they're both attempting to take cover behind is basically big enough to shield one tank from incoming fire from every angle. It's not big enough to shield two. And yeah, shooting at Sigma instead of doing something actually useful has just cost the Comet half of his hit points. You see, what we have here is a situation where it's kind of like two men trying to take cover behind the same rock. One of them's armed with a Lee Enfield rifle, and the other one is armed with a Webley revolver. And the guy with the Webley keeps getting in the way of, and blocking the guy with the Lee Enfield. So I can kind of sympathise with the Comet, because, you know, tier 7 medium in a tier 9 battle. But the sum total of his contribution to the successful outcome of this battle is that he fires 7 shots, most of them in the Sigma, scores 2 hits on the enemy, and does 276 damage. That's it. And he could have been, if he'd instead decided, like the ELC, even 90 over there, to get out and actually do some spotting. Although, having said that, the ELC's lost half of its hit points already, and it has way better camo than a Comet. So let's not judge the Comet too harshly, as Sigma takes some really nasty flanking fire from a couple of opportunity shots from the enemy T-50. The T-50 went for Sigma, of course. Probably didn't even see the Comet. Because amongst the many things that are bad about the Conway, and we will make a list, we're going to begin with the horrible camo rating. It basically doesn't have any. We've already mentioned the terrible armour. It's a Centurion hull, so it doesn't have more than 76mm of protection anywhere. Uh, the turret is huge. Sticks out like a sore thumb. Only has at most 132mm of armour, although it does have a good gun mantlet. The mobility is terrible, I mean it's slow, it doesn't turn well. The only thing this tank destroyer is good at is shooting at things. Which is the purpose of a tank destroyer. It's just that in order to get this really good 120mm gun, you have to give up pretty much everything else, because everything else about the Conway sucks. The gun is very good though. 0.32 accuracy, 1.2 second aiming time. It's actually not the only gun, although this is the one that most people tend to go for because of the accuracy and the aiming time and the relatively fast reload. All of that adds up to very good damage per minute, more than 3,000, and depending on the equipment loadout that you go for, potentially significantly more than 3,000. The only benefit of using the BL 5.5 inch gun, because it has worse aiming time, worse accuracy, Technically slightly better penetration, but we're only talking about like 2mm difference. It does do 600 damage per shot though. But most people are going to be using the 120mm, because aside from the damage per shot, pretty much everything else about the gun is better. It was the gun that armed the Chieftain after all. And the Comet's dead. 276 damage done. And in no way the worst player on the team despite doing effectively nothing the whole battle. Didn't even get any spotting damage. Oh, don't know if you noticed there in chat, the ELC 90 is asking, why am I pushing if you're all on the back line? That is an excellent question, ELC. Why are you pushing 
if you can clearly see that the rest of the team is all on the back line. If you can see, and he clearly could because he asked the question, that nobody else on the team is in a position to actually shoot at and therefore earn you spotting damage on the targets that you're spotting, then not only are they too far back, but you're too far forward. Come on, it's not hard. I guess it's just easier to complain. Scores are even at the moment. Hit point totals, not so much. The enemy team have a two and a half thousand hit point advantage. Can't do less than that now. There are three of those Doom Turtles on the enemy team, which is not great news. One of them, or at least one of them, however, does not have the big gun. We know this because he just hit Sigma and he only did 394 damage. Which means he's using the 120mm gun. That's not necessarily good news though. It certainly doesn't do as much damage in one hit and he's just hit him again. But it definitely has a much, much faster reload. See, often when people are facing off against a Doom Turtle... Bit of foreshadowing there. <laughs> You can time the reload, because they usually have the big gun. You can't do that if they're using the 120mm, which is a very, very good gun, even if it's not technically the best gun available on the tank. The shorter reload will often catch you out and get you killed. Enemy team, now one kill. Still 2,000 hit points ahead. Speaking of tier 7 mediums in a tier 9 battle who are actually capable of being useful to the team alive, have a look at the minimap over on the western flank. The VK 3002D has managed to get himself behind the two enemy tanks on the west. Turns out if you use your brain and a little bit of mobility, you can actually do more than 276 damage and occupy a tank destroyer spot. And he's done it. He's actually managed to get the kill. Good job. So the western flank is at least secure. And the kills are even, although the enemy team do still have that 2,000 hit point advantage. Unfortunately, most of that 2,000 hit point advantage lies in the two surviving Doom Turtles. The team's lone surviving heavy tank, the Emil, was just asking for somebody to go and spot so he could snipe them. <laughs> it's like everybody in this battle thinks they're a tank destroyer. Who exactly is going to go and spot? It's certainly not going to be the Saladin. Although the team do have a surviving Super Hellcat. Yes, I know, you heard that right. Do not adjust your ears. We're more than a minute into the battle and there's a Hellcat that's still alive, which indicates that he is capable of thinking and breathing at the same time. And you can look at the map and see him swooping up around there past the enemy base and flanking around in order to, well, get behind the enemy team and do some damage with his 90mm gun and fail now at least spot somebody. There's an excellent chance that that Hellcat driver is thinking and breathing at the same time. Another little bit of foreshadowing for you there. <laughs> Although he has found and killed the enemy artillery. Whoa, what is that? What the hell is that? The squall, I don't even know what that is. He's left Sigma on 33 hit points. And then Sigma takes his shot and he leaves him on none. So, good news, there's only two enemies remaining. The team are now two kills ahead. Uh, bad news, the two enemies remaining are the Doom Turtles. And between the two of them, they still have a thousand hit points more than all of Sigma's team combined. I mean, him especially, he now only has 33 hit points. Technically 32 more than he needs, I suppose, but well, it's kind of academic when you're facing it... Oh, oh that was unfortunate. But when you're facing a pair of Doom Turtles, it doesn't matter whether you've got 33 hit points or 333. Either way, they hit you once, they're going to kill you. Now, here's the other big brain moment from the Hellcat. He's in the enemy cap circle. This is perfect, because it means that the two Doom Turtles now have to go back and get him out of the cap circle. And they're really, really slow. And at least one of them isn't doing that. But with slightly more than a minute to go before the team wins by capping, less than that if the Emil had continued onto the cap circle as well, the two of them choose violence. Abandon the cap, although to be completely fair, you can see the second Doom Turtle just popped up over there to the northeast. He would have probably been able to get back and at least chase the Super Hellcat out of the cap circle, but would have been totally out of position while doing so. As it is right now, he knows there's nobody in the cap circle, so he's coming back this way. 
Super Hellcat did manage to successfully distract the Doom Turtle, and he is in a super fast, apparently not fast enough, tank destroyer, uh, which should have easily been capable of staying out of the way of the Doom Turtle's gun. And as quickly as that, the two surviving teammates who chose violence, well, they got the violence they were looking for. And Sigma is now the last tank left alive on his team against a pair of Doom Turtles. The only good news here, and I'm really struggling to find any good news at all, is that while they do have, between the two of them, 38 times the hit points available to Sigma, he can at least one-shot one of them. Uh, the other one, not so much. And it has been a while since we saw the other Doom Turtle, and I think Sigma's spider sense is tingling, so he's just going to go and take a quick look. I mean, the hit point totals are largely... Aside from the fact that there he is, Oh, and he saw you. Oh, and it just missed. <laughs> you can probably get a quick shot off. Oh, no. I think it's fairly safe to say Sigma is probably panicking a little bit here. He's going for the commander's hatch and it missed. I mean, this gun's accurate, but at that range, it's... Well, it's not that accurate. But the hit point totals, aside from the T95 over to the north... The hit point totals are largely irrelevant, because both of these two guys are one shots for each other. It's just a question of who gets the successful shot off first. Thing is, the other Doom Turtle can afford to wait, because he's got backup coming. Sigma? Yeah, not so much. He's going to need to kill him, and quick. Again, he's going for the commander's hatch. This time it hit, but didn't get through. Trying to troll this guy into shooting and missing. There it is. Oh, he's got him! Beautiful snapshot. Small element of luck involved there, if I'm being completely honest, but hey, a kill's a kill. So now... Well... <laughs> there's the other one. It's got a lot of health, hasn't he? <laughs> it's going to take more than one shot to kill this guy. In fact, it's probably going to take three. And they have to actually penetrate. <laughs> hey, there's one. Two more of those and you've got it. Easy. <laughs> You're playing a very dangerous game here, Sigma. I appreciate what he was doing. He was trying to troll the T-95 into shooting. The thing is, I mean, he's got a good reload on this 120mm, but it's not that good. The T-95 fires, he's probably not going to get two shots off. Unless he can get the first one off very, very quick. So we're settling down to a game of... A very, very slow game of chasey, chasey, catchy, catchy, killy, killy. He's going to need to get more than 50 metres away, though, in order to go undetected and keep the Doom Turtle guessing. When two tanks are closer than 50 metres apart, it, concealment doesn't matter. You automatically know where each other are. The issue here... Well, there are a number of issues. We talked about the bad mobility of the Conway. If he'd, if he'd been in a Hellcat... Right, watch what he does. More than 50 metres apart. The second... Okay. Now he doesn't know which way you're going, so now he backs up, he turns around, and he's planning on the T-95 to be heading to cut him off. And he is heading to cut him off. But <laughs> the Conway's just not fast enough to capitalise on it. A Hellcat would have been round there and up the T-95's ass like a rat of a drain pipe. The Conway? Not so much. So now it's back to a very, very slow game of chasey, chasey, catchy, catchy, killy, killy. Honestly, watching these two try to outmaneuver each other, it's like watching old people have sex. <coughs> Apparently. So I've heard. <laughs> Can you get the shot? Before you... Be oh, it's going to take another one! <laughs> Oh, and he's got him. Wow. Man, that was physically painful <laughs> towards the end. <laughs> but he did it. Only the three kills. But I think we can probably all agree that the kills that he did get were the ones that mattered. Here's what I don't understand, though. And I am sorry to keep picking on the Comet. I mean, I wouldn't want to be in a Tier 7 medium in a Tier 9 battle, especially not on that map. But while he was not a whole lot of use to the team alive, only doing 276 damage, look at where he finished on experience earned. Seventh on the team, he's in the top 50%. 276 damage done, zero spotting. 
with a terrible WN8 rating of 395. How does he end up being placed two positions on the team higher than the bat chat who did nearly seven times his damage with five times better WNA rating, but with 50 less base experience? I mean, I've got nothing, genuinely. <laughs> How is that even possible? I appreciate that if you're bottom tier in a two-tier matchmaking spread battle, then you get an experience and credit bonus to reflect that you are bottom tier, but... Holy shit, is it really worth that much? Doesn't seem right. But I mean, I, I guess it just goes to show that even if you think your situation is hopeless thanks to the matchmaking, at least try to make yourself useful to the team alive, and you will be compensated for it. But this isn't about the Comet, this is about uh, Sigma, who, I mean, despite panicking, we, we all saw it, <laughs> we all saw you dunk your shot into the road there, um, but, I mean, you know, you had a Doom Turtle looking at you from the other side of the road. It's completely understandable. But you kept your cool when it mattered. You had a little bit of luck on your side. And it all translated into a thoroughly well-deserved win and a very amusing battle to watch. So congratulations to Sigma. Well done. And I hope you all enjoyed watching him suffer. Because that's it for today. As always, take care. And I'll catch you next time.